you said you've been coming over here for a number of years now. What sort of um, themes have you noticed regards Manx and people's attitudes towards Manx? Well, there's a huge change, I think. Uh, when I was first interested in, in Manx Gaelic, I think probably I was already at college at that stage, and I was in the mid, late, mid to late 80s I was coming over, and that Manx really was a minority pursuit in the country at the time. It was hardly visible anywhere. Uh, the number of very fluent speakers was probably only 20 or 30, uh, possibly less as well. Uh, they were always uh, very active and there were a number of classes going on around the island, but it really had no visibility. But more or less, the government ignored it as well. I think uh, it, it's changed since. It was probably changing around that time too, but the, that didn't come to fruition until a few years later. So now, um, I think one of the big things you'd notice from a society point of view when you come to Manx, that Manx is kind of unremarkable. People kind of expect little bits of Manx to be seen everywhere, Manx to be in school, to have those choices, to be able to learn Manx and so on too. So people have uh, become much more aware of Manx in the Isle of Man, I think, through its uh, changing image. So its role in the socio-politics of the Isle of Man has changed enormously. The number of fluent speakers, of course, has changed too. There's, there's far more of them. Uh, even 10 years ago, I was doing a little research project here, and we worked out that we could find out who were the fluent speakers more or less by asking the fluent speakers, who are the people you know, who speaks well, and uh, then we go to them, and eventually we ended up with a number of around 60 or so speakers. In the last few years, people have always been telling me, well, we met somebody yesterday that they spoke Manx, didn't know that person knew any Manx at all, so it's changed, it's changed considerably, I think, mm -hmm. really. And of course, the, the school as well, and uh, people associated with the school, and the parents of the children associated with the school, and uh, uh, of course, the school children themselves who are leaving the school now and going through secondary yeah. education too. So there's there's been quite a change in the last ten to fifteen years, I'd say. What would you attribute that change in, you know, the positive? Well, do you want an academic answer? Or do you well, want just an answer would do really. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, kind of the academic answer would be late modernism, actually. Oh, right, yeah. No, well, forget the <laughs> academic one and just uh, cut to the chase. <laughs> well, actually, it's a fairly similar, similar phenomenon that you see across Europe. There is um, people um, have reached, I think, a, a level of um, uh, it's, it's not exactly wealth, but uh, of, of personal comfort, where the, most of what they need has been uh, achieved, and so they're more interested again in, in culture and uh, sort of things around them. And you see it in minority languages and uh, languages which have been marginalised over the cross of Europe. The Isle of Man isn't that different, really. Mm. But I think it's also the evolving political situation, too, uh, that uh, the relationship between the Isle of Man and uh, the outside world has changed, I think, in the last, well, at least half a century, I'd say, and certainly in much more so in the last 10 to 20 years. And the important thing is people are more aware of that. So people know that they can do things without... Uh, being particularly upset about what other people might think about it and mm. so on too. It's not entirely a Manx phenomenon, I think that's, that's true in other countries too. You work with other, sort of uh, got an interest in involvement with other minority languages, is that, is that a yeah. similar sort of theme yeah. then? I'm interested in big ones too. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so with some minority languages, yes, I, I lived in Brittany for a long time. Of course I speak Irish at home too, which is uh, it's a state language, an official language, but it's still really a minority language. It's a language spoken by a minority. Yeah. And um, I do do a lot of research as well on other small language communities. And I'm not quite sure if minority language is always the right term, mm. but uh, I have been doing a lot of work recently in, the, in Monegasque and um, other small languages spoken right down in the, in the Mediterranean there too. Mm. It's warmer. <laughs> well, it is indeed.